Welcome everyone, Kostin here with my campaign overview for Count Noctilus of the Vampire Coast. The Vampire Coast certainly is a race that has a lot of issues in terms of their unit roster, but they do have strong heroes, they do have strong lords, and they do have strong artillery. Those are the strengths of the race that you're gonna have to play in order to succeed with them in a campaign. Their economy on land is pretty awful, but their economy in ports can be really good. You can also establish pirate coves to also generate a significant amount of money in ports that are held by the AI. And that might be the best way to actually play Noctilus given his starting position. But let's talk about his faction effects. He gets a diplomatic relations benefit with the followers of Gash. He gains war declaration missions with rewards for them. Pirate crew recruitment capacity plus two. Pirate crew being the horde armies that the Vam Vampire Coast have for all their legendary lords as well as select uh, lords that you can unlock through the research tree over here. So four with the legendary lord, that's five, uh, five per, um, per campaign. Now, these horde armies give you various benefits in your campaign, like our, like um, defense, casualty replenishment, upkeep benefits, campaign movement range. You can get a ridiculous amount of campaign movement range as an Octolus, especially at sea. And then recruitment duration of minus one per turn for Necrophex Colossi, because that is the focus for Noctilus over here. He has a minus 20% upkeep for Necrophex Colossi, but this, of course, also stacks with the upkeep benefit that he gets from his Horde army, adding to quite a lot over here when you're adding all of that up. So just the main structure alone is 20% and 20% on top of that, and then uh, this. Uh, this particular structure here adding 15% so you get a significant amount of upkeep reduction for units in general as Noctilus and just having that lower upkeep for Necrofix Colossi is pretty significant. Then weapon strength plus 15% for large units. This is obviously useful for the melee benefit of Necrofix Colossi but also just the melee benefit in general of large units. Then in terms of his special skill line he gets Lord Recruit rank plus two all provinces, casualty replenishment, rec uh, Lord local recruitment capacity, local province, income from sacking settlements, pirate crew growth uh, plus five, income from raiding, regeneration causing terror, leadership benefits and melee defense benefits for depth guard, terror guys and deck dropper units. The depth guard uh, aspect in particular is very substantial because they're a good unit and then you get the leadership benefit and unbreakable the unbreakable benefit for noctilus himself is not really great the leadership benefit however for the vampire coast army a bit hit or miss because the they have very low leadership so just adding five may not necessarily matter all that much so this skill you could give it a pass now he has the entire melee skill line a very substantial melee skill line to speak of and then he has a huge magic skill line as well when it comes to magic, I personally prefer having magic on heroes in a campaign as opposed to having it on the Lord and instead focusing the Lord ability on their special skill line, their melee skill line, their blue skill line, as opposed to just getting any magic. Just that's uh, that's how I view it, because obviously you have a limited number of skills available. It's pretty easy to get a vampire fleet captain in the campaign as an Octolus. Okay, so those are the Lord of Effects pretty clear cut. How do you play them? How do you play him? What should you focus on? Well, one of the main advantages, as I mentioned, is artillery. So that's what you're going to want to get very quickly. These mortars in particular can be substantial when it comes to besieging settlements because the AI is not exactly the best when it comes to dodging artillery in settlements, in sieges. They are much better when it comes to open field battles and in sieges in particular you can only send noctilus or the heroes in general that you'll have in a campaign pin the enemy in place and then use the artillery the mortars in particular to wipe them out there are people who have played with like just an entire stack of mortars i don't necessarily think that's the best possible option but certainly given the vamp the weakness of the vampire coast roster it works very very well and there's a lot of sieges on the horizon for you if you're playing as noctilus so what you want to do is start getting this uh, to tier, start getting this to tier two very quickly. Uh, then wait um, a bit more, get the structure, get the bombards, and get mortars, and that will give you a lot of benefits in your campaign. But you do have some Certainly. difficult battles or early on over here in the campaign. You start at war with Ternok and you start at war with Kalador. Now you can take over Kalador pretty quickly. And one of the things some people can do, if they so desire 
is to actually wipe out Tyrion very quickly in a campaign and fight their entire campaign in Ulfwan. But here's the thing about that. You don't actually need to do so. I mean, fighting the High Elves on their home turf is always a very risky proposition. But of course, you start close enough to the High Elves over here with the Galleon Graveyard that they're likely going to besiege you over here anyway. Now, the Galleon Graveyard is a very powerful Vampiric Coast uh, settlement. It's got a lot of building slots, so you can get a bunch of unit recruitment over here, hero recruitment. Though bear in mind to increase your hero capacity, you do need to get those Vampire Coves. That is going to be important in, uh, in your campaign if you're playing as the Vampire Counts. So your best bet would be to be the raider that you're supposed to be. So take out Kaldor, start with the settlement over here, then take out their capital. Uh, especially if you can get some mortars pretty quickly in this campaign, take out their capital. Or just march around the capital directly and take them before they get another army. Like they have an army over here. Is a bit of a powerful army, but you can defeat it because they do have these Miss dragon princes over here. De defeat this army. Uh, come on, uh, come here on land and start and take down Vol's anvil or take Tor uh, Sefai first and then attack Vol, uh, Vol's anvil take it over um, or not you don't actually have to take any of these territories or you could sell them to Tyrion there's a bunch of choices in the, this campaign though bear in mind the high elves do have a fairly high level of aversion against you I personally played Noctilus's campaign in the following way I defeated this campaign I achieved a campaign victory I actually allied Tyrion because minus 40 aversion that High Elven factions may feel towards you Protocol is actually something that you clean, can don't manage. Now, it is difficult, don't get me wrong, especially because Tyrion is going to be allied with a bunch of other factions, so you're not just going to be in a situation to keep Tyrion happy, you're also going to be in a situation to deal with Alariel, but you, you can certainly make that campaign plan work. One of the things I would do is obviously take these elements to Elven to Tyrion, and then march over here, get Whitespeak um, over here, uh, or rather put the vamp a vampire cove Observe. over here in these kind of settlements where um, where they're on the coastline and let the high elves eventually take them benefit from these settlements take like the griffin gate for instance give that to alariel or wipe out Alarian, give that to alariel try and make those diplomatic relations work or alternatively you can come over here in this particular settlement and try and make an alliance with marafi because if you take some of these settlements and sell them to marafi while establishing pirate coves and getting Marafi to go to war against this faction, you can also make alliances work with the Dark Elves. And that might actually be the easier option, because instead of dealing with two factions that really hate you, the Dark Elves, yeah, they're not going to be your best friends either, but still, there's opportunities. Like, there's four ports over here where you can set pirate coves. You could also just decide to besiege Lawfern, and instead of taking it over, just establish a pirate cove. Drain their income. That's how you should play this campaign, and then come over here, or uh, two more ports over here, another port over here. Like, plenty of ports if you go north, but you should not stay in this area, because this is basically the highway between the Dark Elves and the High Elves, and both of them don't really like you all that much. So if you stay in this kind of area, which is where Silostra is, you're going to end up in a pretty messy situation. But there's plenty of ports, and that's how you should play the Vampire Coast faction. Choose your targets, and then of course uh, start building infamy. Get those um, get those rogue armies effectively to spawn. Like you can attack Skeggy over here. Like plenty of ports over here in Skeggy. Free ports over here, like establishing vampire uh, um, coves, uh, pirate coast uh, coves over here. Just getting a lot of income from that. Like this entire area of the campaign map is much better than dealing with Ulf one. Because eventually, obviously, Mazamundi will take them over. And if you weaken Skeggy for him, he'll do it much faster. And hell, if you take some settlements as well, he'll like you. Like, for instance, you could come over here, start to build some pirate coves, of course, and then move inland to take some of the settlements, sell. Like, the way you should view your army is you don't really want to hold a lot of territory yourself. You're not necessarily going to benefit from that. Your unit recruitment as well as your hero capacity can be achieved with pirate coves. So if you're taking over a settlement, you're doing it to trade it to another faction. Though bear in mind 
that a province like this, like the jungle over here, could be very substantial to take. Though, of course, you're, you're not going to be able to maintain a very good workable relationship with Mazamundi. But in this campaign, you do have a lot of choices. You do have a lot of flexibility. You can play the Ulfwan campaign. You can play the Lustra campaign. That might actually work a lot better in a lot of ways because the Lizardmen, they're actually much easier to deal with than the High Elves. Or deal with the Lizardmen first or deal with all the factions over here. Skege is a bit of a nuisance, to be quite honest. But range firepower, range mortar power will wipe them out or you can ignore Skaggy and just go for the Imperial faction over here and try and make a deal work with Mazda Mundi. I'd say the only provinces you want on land are provinces in Europe uh, in that have a lot of ports in them so for instance the jungles yes absolutely maybe even the Isthmus coast could actually be worth it just to take it over but bear in mind your hero capacity situation and how that works you do need those uh, power coves in order to increase that hero capacity and your heroes are one of the more substantial um, power that you do have throughout your campaign so bear that aspect in mind lots of flexibility in this campaign i personally don't like playing the vampire coast because their armies are just too weak but there's certainly a lot of fa uh, fun campaign mechanics that they do have available over here but you don't need to eliminate any faction if you ha if you want to have a bit of an easier time in this campaign you could always come over here to Kemri because the Tomb Kings are not going to be able to stand up to you, at least early on in the campaign. Later on, obviously, very different situation. You can get a really strong and good military alliance with Tarkin. In fact, you might want to beeline it over here, over there very quickly, like maybe make your way for Kaldor, sell that territory to Tarion, then come over here to Estalia, do uh, take out some Estalian ports or establish some pirate coves over here, because Ikeclaw eventually is going to take over this territory, though Bear my Mogur might wipe them out. Take Sartosa, because that is also a very substantial settlement, and then go over here and deal with Rapans. Uh, take the territory uh, that Rapans has for yourself. Uh, two ports over here, pretty good ports as well. Though I'm not sure how Kaffer would be for the Vampire Coast. I think it's not necessarily as good as just regular ports from for the Vampire Coast. But still, take some of the territory here, uh, and then sell the rest of it to Arkan the Black. Have a military ally and expand. Uh, expand the Camry or take territory and just give it to Arkan while you're busy dealing with other parts of the campaign map. But you don't necessarily have to stay in place in any area of the campaign map. The Galleon's Graveyard is actually difficult for the AI to attack. Or I see the AI struggling to attack it because, generally speaking, they don't have vision on it. And until they have vision on it, like, unless one of their armies, like, just wanders into this, to this area, at least this is what I see when... Uh, the AI is fighting Noctilus, unless one of his armies is marching like in this area and they're trying to chase him down and then they get vision on the Galleon's Graveyard, um, then the AI is not really going to bother with that. Though bear in mind, the AI does have better campaign line of sight than you do, far better campaign line of sight. So just be aware of that particular aspect. You might have to defend the Galleon's Graveyard from invaders, though you can always maintain a garrison over here. And it does have a substantial enough garrison by default over here, though... When you're looking at the situation, don't assume that garrison is really worth much. It can be worth much in odd resolve, though, if you have a proper army to defend it. So that's kind of Noctilus's campaign in a nutshell. You're the master of the seas. You have a lot of movement range on uh, at sea, so you should really make use of that uh, particular uh, particular situation. Like you get 15% campaign movement range with his own with his item over there. So. Try and make use of that uh, to your benefit to cover a great deal of the ocean very quickly and just raid the coastline, get a lot of benefits from doing that. Don't stay um, in one particular place because that's not beneficial to your campaign. The most beneficial thing is to establish as many pirate coves. Now, of course, that means potentially involving yourself in a lot of wars, but pick on the smaller factions. Like, don't go, don't get involved in a war with a major faction or a faction that has allies, but pick on factions that already have enemies. Like over here, Estalia, for instance, is a great choice. Aquitaine, like the coastline of Bretonia can be a great choice. Like Bordelot is going to fall to Grom, for instance. Mussolini is likely going to fall to uh, to Lou and Leonkur, all those kind of things. So just bear in mind, you do have a lot of choices. I personally would probably go north because of all the ports that are in this particular area. Establish pirate coves here. They'll also try and maintain some good re diplomatic relations with the high elves because you absolutely can to a certain extent. Anyway, that's all there is to say. Pretty straightforward when it comes to it. 
you have flexibility, use that flexibility, don't get tied in one particular spot, and certainly don't fight a land war as the Vampire Coast, because that's not your strength. 